Today, I'm casting a game from the GOM TV All-Star Invitational Tournament. This is going to be a Zerg versus Terran on Lost Temple. I'm sure that a lot of you have heard of this Zerg player. His name is Fruit Dealer. He is the champion from GSL Season 1. He has really made a name for himself, not only in the Korean scene, but, you know, globally when it comes to StarCraft 2. Such a dominant Zerg force. Really looking forward to seeing what he has in store for us today. I'm sure that Fruit Dealer is very familiar with his opponent, spawning at the 6 o'clock position. This is going to be Foxer, the fake Boxer. Um, I mean, his alias officially is Boxer, sort of paying homage to Slayer's Boxer. But the internet has sort of dubbed this guy Foxer, so that's what I'll be calling him for this cast. Two very good players. Foxer is a part of the Prime Clan, um, a very large StarCraft II clan, and very reputable. They've been around, you know, since the beta. For a long time, it was really just Prime and OGS as the dominant teams in StarCraft II, but other clans have emerged, such as Fruit Dealer's new clan, as he has quit OGS and is now part of TSL, the SCV life. So, yeah, I'm just sort of giving you a little background information on the players and should mention some information about the map as well. I'm sure everyone, you know, very familiar with Lost Temple, been around forever since the StarCraft Brood War days. I will say that lots of people are considering this map to be favored towards Terran, especially in the early game, and that is in large part because of this, the fast expansion, 15 hatch going down for Fruit Dealer. This expansion, this 15 hatch is very susceptible to drops on the high ground. Tank drops, Thor drops, um, can really wreak havoc on this expansion. Makes it very difficult for the Zerg player. I mean, uh, Zergs are forced to get spine crawlers in position. They're forced to get overlords overhead for vision. You got to get roaches or whatever it takes to deal with that uh, kind of drop play. But that's very common. To be honest, the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock isn't ideal for drop play, but we still might see it. Just going to have to wait and see. So 15 hatch, 15 pool. Wondering what Fruit Dealer is going to have in store for us next. After getting the barracks at the top of the ramp and the orbital command, we do actually have two refineries. So this is certainly indicative of early tech. Very common to get two refineries early and go for banshees, even cloaked banshees. Um, in this situation, uh, just you need that early gas, which would have been nice. Maybe a fruit dealer had gotten a drone in earlier, could steal one of the gases, and then make it essentially impossible for Boxer to stick to his build order. But that's certainly not the case. We do have a Marine here, going to deny scouting. Factory on the way. And this Overlord as well, sort of just going to creep in, probably going to stay on the high ground. Keep an eye on when Foxer is going to want to expand. This SCV, let's take a look at the vision of Foxer. This SCV did get in. He saw everything that was going on and is now getting chased away by the Speedling. Not Speedling, regular Zergling. But he is going to get away. Who's going to be home any minute? Um, switching these buildings around so that the factory can get a tech lab on it. And is this Zergling going to get in? No. Once the bunker went down, that is not the case. And as I mentioned before, the tech two starports on the way. Certainly going to expect to see tech labs go down on these buildings and some early Banshee harassment. So we're not going to be using this ledge to Foxer's advantage, but I mean Banshee play at the same time, very powerful. Uh, very strong early game. Uh, now let's think and see what Fruit Dealer is actually going to do to help counteract this, this Banshee play. On the production tab, we do have another queen on the way, so we are going to have at least three queens out. I think that, you know, three queens on two bases is going to become more and more common. I mean, queens are not heavily, you know, too costly, you know, 150 minerals. And, of course, it's very important for spreading the creep. Uh, transfusion, a very important and seemingly underused ability, actually. So it looks like um, dealer uh, fruit dealer is going to have some queens to hopefully deal with this for I mean for his own sake. Now are we going to see cloak? It doesn't look like it. Actually a medevac as well on the way. So I'm wondering what exactly that medevac is going to be used for. We're just going to have to wait and see. I mean it surprised me a little bit, but um, we're just going to have to see how this game sort of shapes up from here. Sergling is going to get chased away. Not really using this uh, tech lab on the factory either. Not entirely sure why he even uh, got that, but maybe it's going to come into play in a little bit. We're just going to have to wait and see. Now there's the use of the medevac for SCVs. 
going to be used to repair any damaged Banshees. Now this is absolutely pivotal point of the game. We're going to see how well the Banshee Micro is used versus these Queens. Those Queens getting two volleys of their spines off, bringing that Banshee's hit points down to 95. These SCVs going to be used to heal that up, no problem. Overseer as well, overhead, just in case the Banshees happen to have Cloak Spire on the way. Uh, speed for the uh, Zerglings as well on the way. And two Banshees to follow up that initial one. So three Banshees on the field already. Two more Banshees going to be coming up in the Starport, of course. Even some Spore Crawlers. Very nice. Where's that Spore? Down at the Nat, maybe? Yep, on the Mineral Line there. Very nice. Evo Chamber, of course. You need that for the Spore Crawlers. And I'm thinking that Foxer is going to be pushing in in a moment. Taking a look at Foxer's vision. Going to be moving those SCVs up to the high ground. And three Banshees overhead turning on the health bars for you, Don. They were able to focus down that first Queen. One Banshee does go down. Transfusion going down on that Queen. A second Transfusion going down on that same Queen. And with two Banshees left, those Queens... Ooh, is it going to go down? Those SCVs furiously trying to repair that Banshee. It does get taken out. Only one Banshee left. And those SCVs trying to get into position to repair it as, as much as they can. But with Mutalis out on the map, four Mutalis to be exact, I think that is going to be the end of these Banshees. Banshees not the strongest unit against Mutalisks. So it looks like they're going to have no problem cleaning up this uh, Terran Air Force as desperately they are fleeing the scene. And these Mutalisks are going to move in for harassment. How well prepared is our... Terran player Foxer. He's getting the engineering bay for missile turrets, of course, and losing that medevac as well. I believe he... No, he didn't lose the, the Banshee, but he did lose that medevac. But Banshee's nowhere to run, really. He's got some Marines in the bunker. Takes uh, takes out the SCV that was cr uh, making the missile turret. This is really not a good position for Foxer at this point. These Mutalisks really wreaking havoc overhead. Mutalist level 1 on the way. Five more Mutalists on the production tab. This looks like it is going to be a very heavy air harassment. Foxer really needs to get, you know, pumping Marines out. But with just one barracks, that's not going to be good enough. Contaminate going down on this second starport as well. I like that ability. Uh, another underused ability going to prevent that Viking from getting out of that second starport. This Viking abusing its very long range. But with this many Mutalists, I think that... This just might be GG for our Foxer here. These SCVs really, you know, all of them in the red. Lots of them in the red and the yellow. Even taking a 9 o'clock expansion. I love that play. Very important. I love the creep down at the natural as well. Not that <laughs> Foxer's looking to expand anytime soon with this many Mutalisks in his base. And that's it. So effective shutting down of the Banshees. I really like that play 